Um, this is my pillow that I made in Lisa's class. This is my 12-inch square pillow with my feather inlay overlay work and my fancy fringe. So here we have Nikki and she elected to make a little pouch purse instead of a pillow. And she's getting ready to turn it. Here comes. Here comes. Oh, it's exciting. Ooh. That is gorgeous. That is so pretty. It is. Look at that. Wow. Wow. It is Very cool. nice. And she, she did her own designs. Let me see. Look at that. Butterflies. Butterflies. Very nice. Oh, let's see. Put your head Yay. on. Wow. Gorgeous. Looks gorgeous. Oh. Okay, Vicki, tell me what you made first. Okay. This is a cover for a Molson yeah. journal. Yeah, we did it. And this is a coffee cup with a ball of yarn inside of it. So, thanks for the artful stitching of my teacher. It's a beautiful collaboration. Now I am sliding it in. And we're hoping that it fits. Fits. And look at this. Very nice. Oh, I'm so happy. This is Nancy Drew. Well, I hope you can put it in. <laughs> this is the ultimate test. This may yes. not make it to you two. Yeah, it's a little tight, but it'll stretch Ooh, over time. That is so cool. That's so cool. Really an engineering on the part of Lisa Sorrell. This is, a, this is a collaboration. We work together on this project. And yet, so this is my necklace hey, that I made. My feather necklace that I made in Lisa's class. This is so cool and very, very unique. Wow. Yes, I agree with Carrie. You could just wear that with a black leotard and you have a day. You have an outfit. Okay, my name's Rebecca Alexander and um, I'm a leather bag maker. And I came to learn how to do inlay and overlay. And this is my project that I did, which is a mat, or you can hang it on your wall. And this is Lisa's design. And this is my design from Mexican art, because I love Mexican art. This is my friend Nancy. She does glass, and I don't know enough about glass to know how impressed I should be, but everyone is saying her name in terms of awe. So I think I should be very, very impressed. Now, I'm from Seattle, and um, I'm going to teach Lisa how to gather out of the furnace. She's never done that before, and it's kind of scary. If you want to come check it out, here you go. This is the furnace, and, and it's at about um, 2,100 degrees, and there's hot glass. You guys are just way too hot for me. scary. Are you scared? Yeah. And I'm probably going to help, help you come That's out of the furnace, because you'll be like this. Okay. It's really hard. I made it look super.
almost Christmas. <laughs> Low and turn. Low and turn. Low. Pour it. Bro, I got it. This is obviously not. It's hard, isn't My it? thing. Low, girl. You got it. You got it. I'm sure there's a technique, but I'm trying to do that. Yeah, okay, here you go. Yeah, go, go, go! Yes! Yes! Yay! Never! Don't stop! Never! Don't stop! Yeah! That's a nice one. Wow! Wow, I did something! Look at that, look what you made! Smile for the camera! This week I'm going to talk about trimming an insole and I'm going to demonstrate how to do that. I was planning on demonstrating how to do a toe bug and wrinkle and I may have even told some of you that I was going to do a toe bug and wrinkle but I just don't have time to do that this month and so next month I will be demonstrating toe bugs and wrinkles. I've got the insole wrapped to the last, and now I'm going to take that wrap off. My insole has been molded to the last, and it's now dry, and I'm going to trim it. First of all, I want to show you, this is a last bottom pattern from a set of lasts. I want you to look at it. Notice this nice hourglass shape in here. I don't typically curve this in quite so much on this side. I usually leave it straight from the heel up to here and then curve it out. But still, I want you to notice this nice defined curve here. A lot of times I see people trim their insoles and they just have this ugly flat line from here to here. And you really want a nice, well-defined curve here. You can buy just regular old lip knives. In fact, I sell them. But if you want something special, you want to buy a lip knife from Terry Nipshield. I like to hold the, the last up against me so it doesn't slip, and then I just start trimming it right along the feather line. So if you're watching me and you're thinking, wow, it's never that easy for me, then maybe you don't have a knife from here. So now I've got a rough shape. I'm just going to go back in and smooth it a little bit. That's looking good. That's what I want to see. It's pretty much straight from the heel all the way down until it curves out for the ball of the foot. And the last thing I'm going to do is go around at the heel and just guiding off the last, I'm going to put an angle into it. See how my knife is just running right along the last. The last is at an angle and I'm going to continue that angle just around the heel. This is a corner right here. And sometimes over time that corner can dry out and become hard and pokey down inside the boot. I'm just gonna take an edger, just a common edge tool, and go all the way around the insole and take off just that very corner. So the last thing you want to do after you've trimmed both insoles is just make sure that they match. Make sure those curves are the same because in boot making it's not enough to do something perfectly once. You have to turn right around and do it exactly the same again. <laughs>